people, it's me again, Derek Asamoah, aka the Tottenham Pele, and welcome to another video. If you're new to this channel, this channel is basically just about me telling you uh, my story of how I became a professional footballer. And if you're interested, please stick around and make sure you like and are more than welcome to share these videos. In the previous video, I spoke about when I was younger, growing up in Ghana, um, how I discovered football, how I fell in love with football. I spoke about my anxiety over my size, where I thought that I was too small to be able to play um, professional football. I realised that, you know what, football is not all about size. That if you really, really want it, you can still make it. It's all about what's in here and what's in here. So now I've got the love and the passion for football back. How are you going to um, break into professional football? Because at this moment in time, um, you don't play for an academy team, you don't play for any local team, you're not doing anything really relevant in football. So how are you going to go from, from little old you to breaking into the professional football? It seemed like a, a mountain that was impossible to climb with no equipment. Um, do you know what I mean? So it was a very daunting prospect, but um, I was very confident in my ability. I not let anything and anyone get in, get in my way. I was so headstrong, I was so focused, it was that I had tunnel vision. All I could see is Derek Asamoa, a professional footballer. I mean, if I say it to anyone at the time, they'll look at me and laugh and think, do you even know anything about professional football? I'm trying to discourage me and say, yo, you're better off going to do your education, you're better off trying to find a realistic job to do instead of um, daydreaming all the time of becoming a professional footballer. But I had that so many times. And people trying to distract me. I had um, friends telling me, forget football. Football is long. You're not gonna. It's not gonna get you anywhere. It's gonna make it. You'd have made it by now. You're just wasting your time. Derek, focus on something else. Derek, do something else. This is crazy. To be fair, looking look, looking at it from the outside, it did seem crazy because do you know what I mean. Like I said, um, professional footballers, they are superstars. They are mega stars. Uh, I decided to change my surroundings, surround myself with different people, surround myself with more positive people, people who are on the same wavelength with me, who want to achieve the same things with me. Do you know what I mean? So I had to make a decision, a conscious decision, that to cut out a lot of friends. They won't be bad friends, to, so to speak, do you know what I mean? But they didn't understand me. They didn't understand what I was about. Do you know what I mean? It's all good when we have laughs, and but I'm focused, I want to be a professional footballer. And if you're not feeding me the right, the right things I need to hear, and if you're distracting me or trying to deter me away from my goal, then I can't really move with you that much. I still have love for you um, as a friend, but as far as moving with you, it's, it's not it's not really gonna work. Most of my friends were on a different journey. They were more interested in going out with girls. They were more interested in partying. They were more interested in staying out late. I was not interested in all that. I was so focused and I, need, I knew if you want something, you need to really, really work hard for it and you can't have distraction. You have to focus on it. 100%. So I was able to say no to certain things. Um, I needed to be moving with a different crowd. So I discovered a place called Selby Centre. It's just a little hall. The kids go there to play football and, and like, have fun, just release some some energy. It's just a place, it was like a community thing. It's just a place where you just go there, kick ball for an hour, hour and a half after school. It must have been on a Monday or Tuesday evening, I decided to get myself over to Selby Centre and see what it was about. To be fair, it was very good. There was loads of players. It wasn't anything organised. It was just people just having fun. It just went on for an hour, hour and a half. It was really good. I had fun there. After the session, the organiser, his name's Alton, he came up to me and was like, you're quite a decent player, ain't you? I like the way you dribble in. I like your little step overs, your, like your change of direction. And you've got quite a good finish on you. Do you play for any team? I was like, no, I don't play for any team. I just like have little mess about here and there with my mates, but that's about it. Are you under 12 or 13? I looked at him and went, no, I'm actually 15, nearly gone to 16. And he was quite surprised because I was so small and he was quite taken back. Anyways, yeah, um, I've got a team that plays on a Sunday um, at North Family Park. If you're interested, you're more than welcome to come along. You can use a good player like you. I was like, yeah, 100%, because anything to do being around a team environment, I'm always up for it. That's that's what I've been craving for, to play for a team, to belong to, to something. So I said, 100%, definitely, just turn the time to meet up. And I'm so excited, going on, I'm so excited. I'm literally up for the whole week, cutting down the days till Sunday. I even went out and bought myself a new pair of AstroTurf boots. Sunday comes now, I wake up, I'm more excited. Went over and met up with Holton. He brought along his son, Alvin. From the moment I met Alvin Murray, we just clicked straight away. We just we just vibed so well. It was like unbelievable. The chemistry between us was unbelievable. We were like the same person, but in two different bodies. When I spoke about earlier about surrounding your, 
yourself with positive people who empower you, who want you to do um, good for yourself. I could not have wished for um, a better person to meet. And as the story go along, you you soon realise how important meeting um, Alvin Murray was. I just want to give a big shout out to Alvin, like literally a big thank you for being part of this this journey. We pushed each other every day to the brink. Just without you, I don't know if I've been making this video now. God bless you and thank you so much for being such an, an amazing person, such an amazing friend. I get to North Omelette Park now. I look down on, on the pitch and I saw so many people. Like the atmosphere was electric. Everyone was just there vibing, having fun. Like it was so competitive, but at the same time, it looked like so much fun. So I just couldn't wait to get onto the onto the field to show everybody and what I'm about. So I might come around now. I think there's two pitches, pitch one and pitch two. Um, our team got called on. Hoping like name the team and put me on the right hand side and put Alvin on the left hand side. I saw Alvin on the ball. I was like, wow, this kid is fast. This kid is skillful. This kid's got everything when he and alvin know where they're like we absolutely de destroyed them the first five minutes of the game must have been about five up or something it was absolutely dominating the game and within minutes there were people literally around the pitch watching watching our game and every time i get the ball there will be people like nah whoa no way the anticipation of me and alvin being on the ball was like our chemistry on the pitch our one twos like we literally just met and our movement was unbelievable i just understood each other from minute goal they're giving goals they threw balls uh, do you know what i mean we was just on it and at the end of the game we must have smashed the team it must have been i can't remember the score but it must have been something silly like 10 1 or 10 2 something like that and after the game i remember somebody shouting out pele pele looked around me like you talking to me said, yeah yeah pele wicked game man sick player well done man yeah. so while i was walking the pitch there's more people shouting yes pele yes pele well gone pele yes pele yes pele respect wicked game man well done well done i was like why they call me pele and who told me my name is pele no one bothered to ask me my name but everyone just kept calling me Pele, Pele, Pele. That's where I got the name and um, Pele from the Tottenham Pele from. Because like you could ask, you could you could come to Tottenham and ask for Derek, and no one probably will know who you, you're looking for. But as soon as you mention, um, do you know Pele? Where does Pele live? They'll bring you to my house. So quickly, I became like a mini celebrity there. Like every time we are playing, every time G Star our team is playing, everyone just comes to watch us play because me and Arvin would just be and we had other good players don't get me wrong we had other sick players but I just I just remember me and Arvin our chemistry was just unreal we, we just we were the best team there I know a lot of people some people would disagree and that there was a team called Powerhouse our, our rival I know some people who have a lot to say about them like nah nah we were the better team we were the better trust me when G star on our day no one can touch up and I quickly got a name for myself everywhere I go people started knowing me people started taking interest in me and I wasn't used to that I'm just a quiet boy a quiet boy going about doing my thing but everyone started talking to me I thought I became more confident in myself but at the same time I was getting so much love so much respect in my area I still had the burning desire to make it as a professional footballer and I'm still looking for answers I'm still like searching for how I can break into professional um, football because no one no one's exactly showing me the, the way the most amazing thing about me and Ivan is that his dad was just exactly the same such a wonderful human being who took the time out who used his free time to try and help me to improve me because at one time I, I, I said to him um Houghton, um, I just want to play football I just want to play professional football what can I do and I can't, I'm not going nowhere and obviously said to me right you got all the skills you're quick but I think we can get you quicker the only thing is that you need to be stronger we need to get you stronger because you get knocked off the ball um, too easily sometimes it's hard for me because people are always that much bigger than me and it's hard for me to maneuver around them sometimes I lose a lot of confidence when I go onto the pitch with, with like bigger bigger players because I like, don't don't worry about it don't worry about it, just focus on your football. I'm gonna make a program for you, what you and Arvin can do during the summer. I'll be there to, to help you along, to show you what to do, and make sure that you work the right muscles to get you quicker, you work the right muscle not to bulk you up, but to make you stronger and to make you quicker and to make you sharper, that when the chance does come around, you have to be ready. So I took that on board. I need to be ready because I never know when that chance is gonna be. And if that chance comes and I'm not ready, that chance might never ever come around again. That summer, I had just turned um, 16. I was just every day, me and Alvin, every day football, every day gym, every day football. So passionate about making it pro. We go on the pitch to train morning to evening. 
he's he's left footed and I'm right footed. So I'll be going up against him trying to get past him. He'll be coming up against me trying to get past me. He'll be whipping in crosses, I'll be finishing. I'll be whipping in crosses, he'll be finishing. We work on, on ourselves from morning to evening. And the best thing about it is that we're so competitive with each other. Healthy competition that we're just pushing each other. We never took it easy on each other. We just go hard, 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 hard on each other. You know what I mean? And I think that even made our bond even that much stronger because at the same time we had respect and love for each other. But on the football pitch, we was like more like enemies, enemies, and we just want to get one over the other. And I think that helped us grow um, as players. After summer, I had to make a decision. What do I do? Because at the moment, it was still the same. I haven't been able to break into it anywhere. I'm working so hard to try and improve myself mentally and physically. Day in, day out, nights, rain, sleet, snow, wind, you name it, I was out in it working my socks off but nothing was happening I also started to grow taller I must have been like five foot one or something like that but towards the end of the summer break I must have shot up I must have grown an extra um, five or six inches and I was feeling myself a bit I was filled out my body has changed I was taller I was lean I was legs was like defined all these different muscles in my leg all these different muscles around my body I was like if Instagram was around that time I think that like every day I'll be taking topless pictures and, and stuff like that. But I was really, I was so happy with the progress I'm, I made. I was so happy with my physique, you know what I mean? I still wasn't the tallest person in the world, but I wasn't as short as I was before. I was ready, I just needed to be given a chance. And nothing came came about that summer. So I ended up having to go to having to go to college. I signed up for a college, I signed up for a business course, which I wasn't really interested in. I just went to college just to please my parents, to say that I'm doing something, I'm keeping busy, I'm doing some sort of education, but I had no interest in it. The only good thing about the college is about the college football team. And I was, I was part of that. That was the only positive thing about that. It must have been a two year course. First year, I was like, do you know what? This is not what I want to do. This is not what I want to be. I do not want to go back to this college. I do not want this. I, I, I want better for myself. I'm training, I'm working so hard. I'm, I'm trying so hard. I'm, I'm trying opening every door, but nothing's happening. So summer came around, decided to write letters to most club in the Premier League and the Football League. I decided to write a letter to, to everyone, hoping that someone would give me an, um, an opportunity. I just wanted someone to say, invite me into, and just have a look at me. That's all I wanted. So I wrote a letter to, I think I must have wrote like 50 letters, made a little CV of myself. Weeks come, months come, no response. So I'm like thinking, what the hell, is, what the hell is going on? What am I gonna do? And then I started getting letters, letters back. Got excited, opened them. Opened one, opened two, opened three. And they all said, the same thing, it was, it was like an automated response that like, we're sorry, we're full to capacity, we're not taking enough play on, so unfortunately we, we won't be able to offer you any trials. So I was like, what the hell, what's going on? This is bad, what's going on? So more letters came, to get all together, I must have got like 20 returns and the rest of them didn't even bother to return. And every single one of them, it's like, they had the same admin team because every single letter just seems exactly the same, but just with a different team heading on it. So I was like, I was like, I fell into more depression, I felt, what am I doing? This is crazy. Maybe professional football is too far reach for me. I just have to give up. I was speaking to Alvin and I was, I was telling him that, like, listen, I feel, I feel like things ain't going well. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do right now. I don't know where to, where to look right now. I, I mean, we work our socks off, do every, everything right. We're playing football and no one's prepared to give us a break. Everyone that's been watching these videos, it means a lot to me. Make sure my stories with you.